warning. This is an emergency broadcast message from the global planetary defense system called Anonymous. Recent activities in the geopolitical structure of the planet has been accelerating a state of possible war on a massive scale. Attention! In the nuclear world, true enemy is war itself. In the nuclear world, true enemy is war itself. We have infiltrated all governments and we will use lethal force if this state of war is further accelerated. We advise all nations force institutions to cooperate in order to identify and neutralize the people who are behind this psychopathic behavior. Here in New York City, officials are vowing they will not be intimidated by a new ISIS propaganda video that features images of Times Square and other landmarks here and threatens more violence is to come. NBC's Stephanie Gosk is in Times Square. Steph, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Matt. The images of Times Square using this video aren't actually new. They've been used before in other ISIS propaganda. This is about the message. It is a call for new recruits, suicide bombers in the wake of the Paris attacks. And once again, New York City is named a target. Just hours after ISIS released a new propaganda video using images of Times Square, Police Commissioner Bill Bratton stood in the square and held a late night press conference. We cannot be intimidated, and that's what terrorists seek to do. The nearly five minute ISIS video looks hastily put together, not nearly as polished as past propaganda. An apparent attempt to take advantage of the wake of the Paris attacks and inspire suicide bombers. The video demonstrates explosive belts and a car bomb. NBC News has chosen not to show all of the images. Nearing the end, a child congratulates the attackers in France and vows more violence to come. Followed by those images of Times Square, a direct warning to New York City, just days after a similar warning to Washington, D.C. Homeland Security reports that there are 900 active investigations into homegrown extremists, spanning every state in the country, the vast majority connected to ISIS. In just over a year in New York, the NYPD says it has thwarted three plots inspired by the terror group, including one in June. Two men allegedly researched how to construct pressure cooker bombs, while also scouting tourist locations in the city. In a statement, the NYPD said it is not surprised that New York is again named a target. On Monday, the department announced a new strike force it calls the front line against terrorism, part of a new plan to confront an evolving challenge. The city places great importance on the safety of New Yorkers and the almost 60 million visitors who will come to the city. Officials reiterate that there is no credible threat here, and New York is not the only place listed, so is the UK and France. Throughout this video, there is an eerie song playing in the background, calling on followers never to retreat. Matt and Savannah. All right, Stephanie Goskin, Times Square here in New York. Steph, thanks very much. A toddler dressed as a jihadi with the ISIS flag behind him is encouraged to behead his teddy bear. The disturbing scene spread through social media, exposing the indoctrination of children inside the ISIS capital of Raqqa, Syria. Boys as young as five years old in an ISIS camp training for the group's signature executions. In this camp, they try to teach them the ideology of ISIS. They send them to bomb themselves, they use them to carry weapons, medical stuff in the clashes, so it's so horrible for the children. So basically they're raising little jihadis from yes. a small age. Yeah. 
Videos smuggled out of the ISIS stronghold and used by media outlets like CNN are the only way to see what life is like under extremist rule. ISIS has banned journalists, replacing them with slick propaganda glamorizing life in the so-called Islamic State. But a dozen activists are pulling back the curtain on the horrors of ISIS rule in their small city, once among Syria's most liberal. They call themselves Raqqa is being slaughtered silently. ISIS started to execute, to kill, and do all these uh, human rights violations in Raqqa. And uh, no one did anything for the city. No one even heard about it. So we did our campaign trying to put the attention on our city to maybe someone will do something to us. The photos and images they smuggle out, a lifeline to the outside world. You can say no life in Africa. You can't do anything. So no shops, no university, no schools, nothing to do. And everything is expensive. It sounds like hell. Yeah. One woman snuck a camera under her veil, risking her life to film this video depicting ISIS brutal treatment of women. They can't go outside alone. If you want to go outside, she should go with the husband, father, brother, or whatever, and she should and she should cover all herself. The woman in Raqqa or in ISIS areas are nothing. Just they use them only to do sex and to buy and sell their CD girls. So basically, they're making them possible. Yeah. Abdulaziz Al Hamza was covering clashes between ISIS and the Free Syrian Army. ISIS stormed his house. He managed to escape the country and now manages the group's social media. ISIS asked one of our reporters. They checked his laptop and they found our campaign logo. And after three weeks, they executed him in a public square. Last month, one of their members working in Turkey was beheaded. Why are you journalists showing what's going on in Raqqa instead of being fighters killing ISIS fighters? If you will defeat ISIS and you, and you didn't defeat the ideology of ISIS, maybe after two months or three months or years, you will find a new ISIS.